pleased to give a quick introduction to Nick Ago, who I've uh, known for a long time. Um, based in New Zealand, has come all the way from uh, New Zealand, no, that's the one New Zealand <laughs> uh, to join us today. And he will be giving a talk whose uh, title is something like, unless it's uploading, just say no. No, I don't have this on yet. So I should apologise for the. Uh, Substandard quality of my uh, PowerPoint here. It's a considerable number of steps below what you've just uh, experienced. Um, but in compensation, I have a little handout that uh, there you go. So there is. <laughs> so um, I also want to say that my talk has a much uh, sort of meaner, narrower focus than the previous two talks. So that's also something that I guess should be apologised for. So I want to talk about. Um, Ray Kurzweil, who's a sort of a futurist, inventor, author, um, transhumanist, and sometime philosopher. And in particular, um, an idea of his um, called the law of accelerating returns. Um, and the implications of this law for all of us. Um, so what does the law say? Well, basically, it's um, a claim about technology. And it's a claim that uh, technologies get better and more powerful, which is in itself kind of a humdrum claim. It's not the, just the idea that, well, whenever you buy a new computer, it's a little bit better than the last one. It's the much more interesting and powerful claim that technologies improve, get more powerful at an ever-increasing rate. Um, and I guess the sort of the I don't know, Locus Classicus, or where he got the idea from, the most sort of discussed version or instance of this idea, is what's known as Moore's Law for its uh, formulator, Gordon Moore, who's a sort of a co-founder of the computer company Intel. And he basically said about um, integrated circuits, um, which are, well, for technologically challenged people like me, just important parts of computers, um, that basically the number of um, transistors that you can get into them um, doubles every 24 months. I think that's a version of Moore's law that he arrived at in the 1970s. And basically what Kurzweil does is he takes this and says, well, look, it's not only true of integrated circuits, it's not only true of computers, it's true of all technology. In fact, it's true of the evolutionary process. So the law of accelerating returns is this sort of this generalization of Moore's law. Um, and I guess one of the things, one of the reasons that uh, he thinks that the concept, well, the consequences of this law are surprising is that the way we think about, if this is true, the way we think about technology is vastly at variance with the reality of technology and technological change. So, for example, we, he thinks that we have a view of technology which is basically sort of linear and incremental. That things tend to get better, I don't know, every two years. The, that rate of improvement is pretty constant. Things get better over time. Whereas if you actually replace that sequence with an exponential sequence, um, I guess the reason that we're tricked is that early on, these two sequences are sort of moseying along. We've sort of reached eight at roughly the same speed. But after a sort of a very slow beginning, um, and if you read Kurzweil's books, he loves graphs, and basically sort of an exponential graph will at a certain point basically go near vertical. So you know, by the time the linear sequence, the plus two sequence is plotted along to 30, the exponential sequence has reached um, a very big number indeed, and the gap just gets wider and wider. So that's actually all the, the mathematics that this talk requires, which uh, is kind of fortunate for me. Um, so I want to sort of just say, okay, this is a claim about all technology. Um, I'm going to, I mean, it's a very contentious claim, but given that I'm arguing against Kurzweil, I'm going to concede this to him. So I'm going to concede that the law of accelerating returns is true. So the one reason, or the reason that I'm interested in it, is what he says about its implications for us. So I guess if you think about these graphs that sort of start off slow, start off looking linear, but eventually sort of really take off. Um, he's got a name for the period in our future when 
technologies really take off and the graph goes near vertical. And he calls it the singularity. And the singularity is basically this point on the graph at which things go near vertical. And basically sort of, I don't know, if you sort of remember um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, sort of the in, the in the black box sequence that's basically sort of looked like it was kind of like a hippie sort of hallucinogenic, sort of hallucinogen fueled sort of experience. Well, this is basically this point in our future history, according to Kurzweil. So the graph goes near vertical. I mean, technologies improve almost instantaneously. Um, and I guess the sort of the way in which, I mean, the, the primary sort of vehicle or means by which the law of accelerating returns is supposed to affect us is by way of technologies of artificial intelligence. So Kurzweil has a view of AI that says that it's not really just about what we can do to other things, what we can do to desktop computers, it's about us. So we can actually make ourselves technolo technological. And he thinks that that's exactly what we're going to do. So basically, I guess this is probably part of something that Natasha would believe in, but basically if you think about what we are, well, we're basically certain kinds of machines. Our brains are very complicated sort of parts of our overall sort of machine, a biological machine. Um, if we want to be part, get the maximum benefit of the law of accelerating returns, we've got to turn ourselves into technology. And he says, well, it's basically this, there's two simple steps that we've got to go through. Two simple as in, well, simple if the law of accelerating returns is true, because we're going to get better and better at it. Well, first we've got to work out exactly what this very complicated object in our heads is doing, master the software of human thought, which is the hard bit, and then the easier bit, because he thinks we've almost done it, is get a machine that at least matches the brain's computational power, and then basically just sort of copy, program the machine to work like a human brain. 